Well, we're excited to be here today with Jane Luke, who's a notable actor in Canadian television. So great to see you, Jane. And she's also the Hi. former host of Polka Dot Door, which is what we're talking about today. So let me start off by asking, Jane, um, tell us a little bit about where you grew up and how you actually got involved in Canadian television. Well, um, I grew up on a farm uh, north of Toronto. It's called the Holland Marsh. It's about 40 miles uh, north of Toronto. And... Um, I the the TV was my babysitter. That was a generation where parents would just say, "Here, they turn on the TV," and um, you know, that's how they took how we were preoccupied while they did everything else. So because I watched so much television as a kid, um, I I remember thinking one day, "I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be on TV, or I'm going to be an actor. I'm going to be a performer." Uh, Anyway, and I would just do little shows for my uh, sisters and my brother unwillingly. So I said, I don't want to watch you anymore. And, I, you know, anyway. Um, so, but I knew from a very young age, I thought that's what I want to do. That's my, my fantasy. That's my dream. Um, yeah, I took a, uh, I decided to, uh, I went to a school, uh, Humber Theater. I studied theater. And as I got older, I knew, you know, you just don't become a movie star. So there's uh, the craft that's involved. And um, so I went to a three-year program and learned. Uh, it was a good course uh, at the time because I learned about backstage like, pr uh, production aspect of it. And, um, yeah, after I graduated, um, one of my teachers um, uh, was producing a, a kid show uh, that was touring around all the parks during the summer. So that was my very first job uh, out of the gate after I graduated. So... Yeah, right away I was already playing to um, uh, you know kid audiences. Very cool. What, yeah. What in what ways has being a children's actor benefited your overall career? Well, kids are really honest, so uh, they let you know <laughs> if they are not happy with what they're seeing. Um, you can just see it on their faces, or they make comments. Um, but uh, it was really great because I learned to hone. Um, I, I also became an improviser. Like I, I, I've been an improviser for years and years through theater sports and um, Second City and now the Bad Dog Theater um, and, and then other stuff on my own. So I learned to read what, uh, how they were reacting. And even though some of the things were scripted, I could at least kind of fidget a little bit about my approach or how I could deliver something. So, yeah. How did you first hear about TV Ontario, and who hired you? How did this job come about? Uh, well, I had known about TV Ontario because it was on, on my TV. I mean, I knew of it. Um, and as a teenager, I remember seeing uh, Polka Dot Door and thinking, that show, who's going to watch that? But Because I was just too cool. Um, not knowing, of course, that it wasn't for people like me. It was for really young preschool kids. So, you know, I didn't know anything. Um, but yeah, uh, one day, uh, my career had already been happening, and then Karen Hazard was the casting director uh, at the time, and she called me in. Um, but it was not my first time. I had auditioned for Polka Dot Door, I think, like two times before, so this is my third time, I think. And I still remember being in a room, um, waiting, and I think there was one other person, I don't remember who it was, and um, then they called me in, and it was... I was called into Jed's office, so I just sat there ta and talked to him, and he had me reading some stuff, and he was telling me what it was going to be like, and and I and I just thought he's talking to me as if I already have a job, like, but I thought no, 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 he's just a really nice, kind man, and so at the end I said, okay, well, thanks very much, and then I left, didn't think anything of it, and uh, then I got the call, like, oh, you booked it. You got Polka Dot Door. And I thought, what? Because what? I absolutely didn't even, I didn't think anything of it. So, um, yeah, so that's that's basically how I got the job. And at the time, though, um, I had no idea that, that um, they were only going to be there for a few more seasons. Because when I got the, when I booked it, my, I remember my agent was saying, this is going to be great. Because you know every year you're going to be doing this gig. And it's like a, a, a one-week gig. And so, um yeah. So anyway, uh, that that's how I that's how I got the role. How would you describe the atmosphere of Polka Dot Door and the family of people that you worked with? Um, well, it's ex um, family is a really good word for it. I mean, I have to say, people were 
so supportive all the way down the line. Um, Jed was a um, really great commander. He was like this quiet, uh, but but somehow you really, I felt like I really needed to do the job and, and please him. And yeah, he was sort of like a no pressure guy. Um, the crew was really fun. They were also really supportive in their own way. Like they, if we did something, I, I, I remember this, like if I was flustered because my it was just inundating, like the amount of material I had to learn. And if you, um, I always, I kept thinking, oh my God, if I blow it, they're going to hate me. They're going to hate me. They have to reset. But they never, ever showed them. Oh, okay. They would just like back it up. Um, and uh, yeah, it was really uh, a really supportive atmosphere and really creative. Um, the prop, the woman who did props, I think her name was Babette. Or I think it was that. She was so creative and there were times once I got more comfortable, I would just ask her, how did you make this? What did you do? And she would just be so patient to tell me how she did something. Like, there's one in the hot and cold, these kids got ice cream cones. And I just thought, those look so amazing. I said, how did, how did you get the ice cream to, to not match this? Oh, it's mashed potatoes. That's all it is. It's the mashed potatoes. She had an amazing French Parisian accent. I remember that. Um, so that's what was really great. It wasn't just about my performance or... Garth's performance or Johnny's performance, but um, yeah, it was just like a, everyone was uh, sort of like a really tight knit unit. Did you do anything <laughs> else for TV Ontario? Did I do anything? Uh, yes, I did. Um, it was a series called How Do You Do? It was uh, to teach um, new Canadians English phrases. Although, and I've had people approach me and they said, Yeah, I saw you in another kid's show. And I just thought, it, it wasn't a kid's show, it was a, for adults. But <laughs> But I, I can see why they would think that, um, because we had to break it down and um, to uh, like just just things like what do you do when you go into a store or what do you do when you go to a bank? How do you say I want like if you want to put money in, you say I would like to make a deposit, like just mm -hmm. just like, like simple phrases like that. And um, and I also wrote um, a couple of uh, monologues uh, for a health show, um, just talking about alternative health and different aspects of health. So. And Any, the pledge drives. The pledge drives, of course. Of course. They always <laughs> recruit you guys for the pledge drives. Any funny or memorable stories while you were on the set of Polka Dot Door? Um, I remember in my first uh, season uh, with Garth Mosbau, um, we were singing a song, and it was Animal Day. And uh, I've heard a few people now who have had uh, some interesting uh, situations with the animals. Anyway, the animals were behind us, and we were in front of them, and... Uh, uh, and so we were singing away, and when we noticed, I noticed the crew kind of like shaking, laughing, and then just losing it. And then I just thought, wow, Garth and I must be on fire. These guys are laughing. <laughs> we're just, we're entertaining up a storm. And then I heard cut. So the, you have to realize that when, you, um, the way they shoot these is that you keep going until somebody flubs or something, and then they cut. So I just thought, uh oh, somebody, something technical or something happened, and then I heard this scurrying behind me. I was running around, and I turned around just in time to, um, to see the guinea pig, <sighs> and I never knew guinea pigs could hiss like that. So they were all laughing. I said, what, what, what's going on? They, and they said, uh, well, GP didn't like uh, those amorous advances that Bunny was <laughs> coming onto him with. So it, I haven't seen it since. Um, but they showed us the playback. And so there's Garth and I singing along and, uh, behind us, the bunny, um, uh, was, you know, making an amorous, uh, um, motion towards the guinea pig. And as he got closer, the guinea pig let him know, no, 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 don't bug me. Then the guinea pig reared up and just started chasing that rabbit around the, and the guinea pig was smaller than the bunny. It was chasing it around and around and around until it finally cornered and just like was hissing. And that's the part when I saw it. So I just thought, boy, I would love to see that again. It was just, yeah. Anyway, that was one thing I remembered because it was uh, so totally unexpected. And they, they'd say to me, you know, with animals, you just never know what to expect. And I thought, well, I didn't really expect that. So <laughs> we all had a, it was really good fun laugh after. Well, yeah. Jane, I have, a, I have a surprise for you. I have that clip, and I'm sending you the what? link. I, I, have the, I just sent you the link over Skype, so why don't you bring that up, and let's see your oh reaction while you watch that. Okay, let me just look here. 
Oh my god, I can't believe you have it. Jed gave this to me, um, and I, I actually provided it to um, a colleague of mine who does some similar archiving, and he has it up on his Daily Motion site. Um, you know what? I ha I haven't. Uh, no, I don't have it yet. I, I actually just um, in the Skype chat box. Oh, see, okay. hold on. Okay. Oh, here. Do, 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 do. Where are we? Oh, so I just uh, click on the link? Yeah. Okay. Oh, might, the bring first... up, might bring up an ad, and you could probably X out of it in the top right. Oh, my God. Clap your hands in the air. <laughs> You'll bang your head if you go. You'll feel some heat. Just keep clapping to the beat. Ah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, there's fireflies. First fly, wow. These guys go. <laughs> That's right. He jumped the fence. I want to see what it looked like. <laughs> oh, my God. That's right. The bunny... Jump the wall because he was so, uh, uh, you know. <laughs> Isn't that oh. great? Oh my god, I haven't seen that in years, so <laughs> thank you for that. Well, you, you set it up perfectly, Jane, and when you're talking about it, I'm just like, I'm gonna have the sweetest surprise. So <laughs> I'm glad I was able to show you that. <laughs> so, um, tell us a little bit about you, you mentioned you did two weeks one with Garth one with Johnny um, tell us about how the show was shot and what you remember about coming into the studio and how they went about shooting the show well um, I think even to this day it was one of the hardest jobs I ever did uh, I never I worked so hard um, because the uh, month before I was handed uh, the scripts and they were like I'm not even exaggerating the size of a phone book when I looked at that oh my god um, and uh, for the hot and cold, it was very, um, it was all about hot and cold. So it started, every every show started with a game about hot and cold, and it was all kind of similar. So I just had to, like, figure out a way to just really focus. Once I have an overall um, idea, I just thought, just focus on the script that I have to do on the day. So we would um, block up five days. So the first... Um, two days were meant for uh, technical blocking so we would just go through it and and just like go through the lines and everything and then this and then three days excuse me we're set to um, shoot them back to back so we shot all five episodes back to back in a three in in three days um, so my I remember the first time I had my break and uh, and it was Garth's first time too so we we're both the newbies I didn't know we didn't have any uh, models to go after so we just said well, we'll just do it the way we, we want to do this and so um, at our first break I remember talking to the crew and everything and and, and just like a, you know just a good it's a break I just need a break but that was for me my mistake I learned from that because I thought oh I'm not in the zone anymore um, because it was so hard for me to get back into it like where where am I again and then I got all mixed up with my hot and cold like well which Hot and cold craft are we doing today? <laughs> oh, it was just um, so after that first one, I thought a break just means I can go back and look over my script for the next part. I said I'm not. I love the crew, but I can't fraternize with them right now, and um, I'll do it at the end. So that was the one thing I remember learning. But uh, those scripts were like um, you were you had to be off book, and. Even the crafts, like the crafts were already scripted. And I remember thinking um, when I got it, and I said, my lines are things like, um, and then you just cut along the line here and make sure it's in a curve so that when you come back, and I just thought, I am i can't wait to see what this thing is I'm about to make in a month. I'm just actually reading the instructions. And, and you had to be as close as you could to it. The only thing, uh, because I think, well, with Jed, he just wanted you to be as close to being on book as you could. That was my feeling anyway. So uh, only if something happened by accident, then you could say, yes, but if that happens, then you can just tape it or, I don't know, you would just, or they would stop. But, yeah, it was tough. It was really, really tough. But it also uh, gave me the confidence like, to, to realize that, you know what, I can, I can memorize a lot of stuff. I am capable of learning a lot. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's what it was like shooting back then. Did they have any merchandising while you're on the show? Did they do anything? Dolls, games, cards, anything? Um, I don't think. Well, they didn't share that with me. Uh, I think if they did have any kind of merchandising, they would have um, asked the more seasoned people to maybe to do something. With it, but I, I wasn't aware of anything like that. Now, did you, um, I know that we were talking offline that you've uh, connected with Carrie Loring. Have you met any of the other former hosts? Well, it's funny. I knew Johnny Chase before he even did Polka Dot Door, um, just from auditions. And also Jerry Mendocino. Um, he, he was doing a series. Oh, goodness. I can't remember. Get, get ready. Oh, goodness. It's terrible that I've forgotten. But I, I've known Jerry for a really long time too. But I didn't know. I didn't even know he did Polka Dot Door. So I knew I knew the two of them. Um, I don't know Nani Griffin, but I, I know of her and I've seen her in productions. But um, and Garth after um, after we did our the movie, that was it. I never saw him again. Um, yeah. So no, not too many of the people intersected. I mean, I think I kept in touch with um, Sydney for a little while, but then she started, um, I think she started another business where it took her out of Toronto a lot of the time, so yeah, it was hard to keep track of, uh, you know, we just lost touch because of that. Um, did you say just the hosts, or? Yeah, the hosts. Now, you mentioned their um, Poker Who Goes to Camp, the special that they did. Was that something specifically for videotape, or did they air that as well? No, as far as I knew, I, I knew that was supposedly, that was, uh, geared for video, because um, I don't remember seeing it on TV. Yeah, I I just remember it was uh, it was great because I got to work with the other hosts. Uh, some of the other I worked with Cindy, Johnny, Garth, Carrie, and then Jim Codrington mm -hmm. uh, for once. Um, there it wasn't one of the other hosts. Oh, should I reveal the 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 secret of Pokeru? <laughs> Who played Pokeru? Um, well, you, they pro people probably knew. Uh, I mean, as they get bigger, they, they probably figured it out. But it was the other host who would always play Pokeru. So when they showed up, um, usually it was the guy because they could fit the suit. I think Cindy was the only female, the only uh, female actor who played Pokeru. Well, I'll let, you, I'll let you in on a little secret. Y year one, 1971, Nina Keogh and Gordon Thompson. And uh, the year after, Nina, Nina Keogh and Alex Laurier, Nina played Pokeru. Oh, so, wow. So it's, uh, you know, it's one of the few times where you see the, the male host interacting with Pokeru. Pokeru, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we had an actual po a designated Pokeru <laughs> person playing Pokeru, so it was Jim Codrington. And Jim, actually, I see quite a, uh, quite a lot um, at auditions and things. So, um, yeah, he was our Pokeru uh, for that, for that particular script. Yeah. Did you sense at the time, Jane, that you were – becoming part of something that really is a, a Canadian phenomena? Well, I, I didn't put that word to it. Um, I knew that I was part of a show that was a long time tradition and obviously was uh, working and, and uh, a good show for preschoolers and really young kids. So for that, I was really proud to be a part of that. So. Do people still recognize you today from time to time? Yes! Yes, they do. And how does that make you feel? Um, it makes me feel like I uh, I must have a painting somewhere that I'm unaware of because I haven't changed the bit, they tell me. Um, you look the same. You haven't. <laughs> the fountain of youth must run run into your taps at home. Well, I, I use really good skin care, so I always have, so I don't know. But uh, I'm a, I think uh, I'm also a bit of a goof, so I think that keeps me young as well. I'm in com I do a lot of comedy, so... Um, I think that helps when you laugh a lot. For sure. Uh, yeah. But uh, I remember I was in Winnipeg. Uh, I was doing a tour um, with some friends, and uh, we had just seen our space where we were going to be, and I had no makeup on at all. And I was like, oh, i got to go. Let's go get some dinner. And I was not in a group. I was – I don't know what my face was doing, but I was just walking along, and this woman just stopped. Excuse me, were you on Polka Dot Door? And I just thought – you recognize me looking like this? I said, oh, yeah, my kids used to watch it, and oh, we were so great. And I just, and I just thought, put on your, put on your uh, polka dot door face, like a good face, <laughs> so that she'll have a good memory to take away from that. This, oh, we've got to get something to eat. So, um, 
Yeah, she recognized me. And then um, I don't know if you know who Anwen Musico is. She's um, well, she's an amazing uh, musical theater performer. And she was on this show called, it was a reality show, Canadian reality show called Triple Threat. Okay. I don't know if you ever saw it. It was a reality show to see who was going to be Canada's uh, Triple Threat for that year. Sort of like a Canadian idol, but, but more for theater. And uh, Michael Rubinoff was the uh, producer of that. And uh, I was doing a show at the time called Utopia. Um, and he produced that as well. So um, at one time when the show was running, he brought these the three finalists to the theater. And I happened to be watching it. So it was really amazing. I just said, oh my god, I know you guys. You And they were so, they are so talented, these three kids. And the one was Ann Wynn. And um, she said, do you, why don't, can we be Facebook friends or whatever? And somehow we became Facebook friends. And then she realized that I was not for that door. So that's when she asked me. And then she said, I used to watch you. And I thought, how, how old are you? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's just funny how uh, people still recognize me. And I don't know, it's a mixed feeling um, because... Part of me is thinking, like, oh, isn't that great that you still remember me? And then the other part is like, oh, you still remember me? <laughs> but overall, it's actually, it's actually pretty great. How does it feel to be associated with one of the most beloved Canadian children's shows? Um, isn't that similar to what we just, your last question? Might be similar. Mm -hmm. Maybe asking in a different way, though. You will forever, yeah. you know, be associated with this. How does that make you feel? Um, I just, that's pretty amazing, actually, because um, what I thought was great about the show is that um, it showed adults playing the way kids do. And um, in a way, that's really great for kids to see that. And uh, I think that's, uh, and I'm a part of that. And I, and I just feel like, yeah, if it, it helped kids to... Um, to more, you know, become more creative or, or come out of their shell, uh, yeah, then I'm, it's amazing to be a part of that. Why do you think Polka Dot Door has become so iconic to generations of kids and adults? Why, why did it work for all those years? Um, well, I think for, for some of the reasons that I just mentioned, like where you could see adults playing. Right. Um, and I think Pokeroo, um, it's this weird... Uh, amalgamation of a giraffe with a kangaroo with a, who knows uh, my grandmother's quilt I don't know um, and you come up with this creature uh, that uh, always happy and friendly and um, at the time I think even Sesame Street didn't have anything quite like it but um, it was I don't know it had all the magical things that came to come together that, that made kids sit up and want to watch and listen and last question, did you retain anything from your time on the show? Did I retain anything? Um, you mean like memories and... Well, photos, scripts, <laughs> anything. Oh, yes, I have my two phone books of scripts. They were, they were like thick. They were each this thick. Five scripts all to be memorized for the one week. So um, I have those somewhere um, in a storage. Um, I, there, were, there were no t-shirts or anything like that. I remember we wore t-shirts for them for Pokemon Goes to Camp, but we didn't get to keep them. <laughs> I never I never got anything, really. So um, I think Carrie Loring has a t-shirt, but, uh, but I, she's probably the only person I know who has anything like that. But no, I, I don't really I don't have anything, except for my memories. And, you know, I, I have videos of my first season. But not my second season. I remember because we were Johnny and I were doing the um, our uh, week. They were also planning. They were in pre-production and pre-planning for the uh, for the movie. So they were they had sort of a split focus, and sort of I think my request got sort of lost uh, by the wayside, and I also forgot to request like to keep on them. Like, can I get a copy? Can I get a copy? So. Um, yeah, um, and I don't know. I may, I may never get one because if it doesn't air again, um, I I don't know. I, I do have the one season, though, that I had with Garth. So um, that's pretty cool because that was my first one. 
So, uh, yeah, and uh, I'm I'm reconnecting with some people. So I think that's um, another cool thing. Very cool. Well, th this has yeah. been great, Jane. Just to take a trip down memory lane, and I know yeah. we'll. Yeah. we'll I know we'll take a second to chat offline in a minute, but I just want to say thank you so much for your time and for your, uh, you know, for your willingness to chat about this. And thank you, too, for taking that job all those years ago and <laughs> delighting so many children in Canada. Oh, wow. Thanks, Travis. It's been my greatest pleasure. Thank you so much.